Good morning, everyone. Daily Bible reading. Going to read today from the second chapter of Genesis. Second chapter of Genesis consists essentially of explanations of creation. Uh, for example, it tells us about the rest of God on the seventh day, and it tells us about the creation of woman. Uh, the first chapter of Genesis says that God created humanity, man, male and female, uh, and here in Genesis chapter 2 it expands upon that. It tells us of Eden and where God situated humanity uh, in the beginning, in his innocence. Now there's been a lot of uh, debate throughout the history of the Bible on how far these chapters should be taken as being symbolic, as being allegorical rather than simply historical. Um, John Calvin, who's uh, whose commentaries in the Bible I tend to regard as being the best currently available, uh, is very insistent that Genesis chapter 2 uh, should be interpreted as history as far as possible. For example, he says that the, the fact that no place on earth has ever been discovered which matches the description of Eden in Genesis chapter 2 is no reason to believe that it wasn't a real place and he goes on to tell us that uh, this is a description of the world in its perfection before the fall and that the fall uh, not only had effects on humanity but also on the rest of nature and parasites and predators and pestilence and disease and other unpleasant aspects of nature came into being at the fall as a response by God to the corruption of the world by humanity so he uh, he created briars for example Calvin says after the fall as a way of creating a world which was more fit for a fallen humanity um, Genesis chapter 2 this is God's word thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them and on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth, when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went, up from, there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted, and it became into four heads. The name of the first is Pison, that is, which encompasseth the whole land of Havila, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good, there is bdellium and the onyx stone. And the name of the second river is Gihon, the same as that which compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia. And the name of the third river is Hidekel, that is, which goeth toward the east of Assyria, and the fourth river is Euphrates. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him an help meet for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found an help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, 
and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Amen.